So I was looking to progress my career clinically and starting to explore other avenues into physiotherapy. As I said, I could go into a team lead role or I could go into a more clinical specialist role, but there was nothing within this trust that really caught my eye. So I was gonna to have to look at something like tracky weaning in an alternative trust. I didn't really wanna leave because I've been here for a long time and I really enjoy working for here. So when I heard that the Band 7 Ward Sister Post became available to AHPs, it really interested me, especially when I heard that the focus was going to be on teaching, educating, and obviously looking after alternative airways such as laryngectomies, tracheostomies, and ensuring that the staff were well trained for that. The role itself is above and beyond anything I thought it was going to be. I had no idea the amount of pressures that the wards were under. So it's been really eye-opening and I'm really glad I took this challenge on because I think I would never have been exposed to it as a physio. Um, the other thing that's come to light that I really enjoy is end of life care. As a physio, you do get to work with patients at the end of their life, but when you're on the ward and you're living and breathing it with the families, it's really different and it's, it's very satisfying to help people to try and get that right for people. My day-to-day -day job involves a variety of things, coordinating the staff, coordinating the shift, managing the ward, working alongside the matron. We tend to work back to back to ensure there's always seniors on the ward. Um, I could be doing anything from personal care to suctioning to teaching someone about NIV. This job's been really eye-opening. Uh, I would have said that when I worked purely as a physiotherapist that I was 100% integrated into my ward. The thing that's really struck me is the amount of visitors you get to the ward. You work with a great deal of different people, different professions, dietitians, speech and language, occupational therapists, doctors, and a lot of those visit your ward and leave. Um, I would have said to you that I was integrated, I would have sworn blind, but we're really not. Um, and it's been quite a challenge to try and get people to actually open their eyes and look at, look at things differently and realise that we need to be working in different ways together. Something that really struck me when I first started was that you'd hear the dietitians or speech and language therapy say, could someone come and reposition this patient or can someone weigh this patient for me? When if they're here and that's part of what they need, why are they unable to do that? So when I explored that, it actually turns out that some of them aren't trained from a manual handling point of view. So that's something that's now being addressed so that they can weigh the patients and support the nursing staff on the ward and also make sure that the patients get weighed at the precise time they need it not three hours later when we've got time for it. I think it's really important as the workforce changes that we all start to look at ourselves and our roles and how we can work differently to ensure that the patient gets the care they need at the time they need it by an appropriate person. Something I think I've learned in this role is that there's different boundaries and some of them are there for a reason and some of them I think we've just learned. There are role specific boundaries and there are professional specific boundaries but there are also some of these sort of boundaries and tasks that have just landed with people for no particular reason. So we always think that it's the physio's job to get a patient out of bed or it's the nurse's job to look after pressure care when actually these are areas that we can all do and we should all be sharing skills in. I can give you an example of myself a few weeks ago where I had a patient who was deteriorating. The doctor's and I were unsure, we weren't sure, you know, is it all secretions or is there an element of heart failure? So I wanted the patient to go onto a fluid balance chart. So we switched his catheter from a traditional bag onto a urometer. So I said to the nurse, can you show me how to do that? Thinking, oh, I'm gonna learn something really complex. And I was absolutely horrified when I literally watched her unplug it and plug the next one in. Now, if I had known that before I was in this role, I would have done that years ago. And I think a lot of professions are really open to these change and working in new ways. It's just that we don't know the skills we need to know. And by learning them, the patient's going to get the care they need right there and then instead of waiting. Working differently creates a variety of different opportunities for staff. You get exposure to different areas of patient care, different areas of what's going on in the hospital and you just get experience in the wider picture of what's going on, especially what's going on for that patient and what that patient needs in order to get to the destination they want to be at, whether that's end of life care, back home so they can sleep in the bed next to their other half. I think by working differently, we can all work to get a better baseline knowledge in which to build on to ensure the patients get the care that they need.